If you are looking for a series that does not take itself too seriously and that can be over the top in the best way possible, Hello besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day and you already know from the title we are going to talk about all the books that I read in the past month of May and let me tell you I read 18 books. Yes, I, I was like I was shocked when I was counting the books at the end of the month 18 books usually my average is like 9 around 9 9 to 10 maybe 11 I don't know but it is around 9 but I read double double I was like I was on a reading kick and I had the best time ever so yeah I don't want to be repetitive so I'm not going to mention the books I'm not going to talk about the books that I have already talked about in my reading vlogs I will link them down below I have a reading vlog where I read three books The Curse of Saints Brides by Ali Hazelwood and A Tempest of Tea and you can check them there check the reviews my reactions and also I have a second reading vlog that I filmed during the month where I I read The Crimson Moth, uh, When the Moon Hatched and The Reappearance of Rachel Price. The only thing that I'm going to say is that you need, you must read When the Moon Hatched. That's the only thing that I'm going to mention. If you want to know more, go watch my reading vlogs. And with that being said, let's move on to the books that I didn't film a vlog for. The first two books that I read during the month were a reread of The Stolen Air and then The Prisoner's Throne. And let me tell you, I enjoyed the second book even more than the first one. I really did because the things that were missing, the things that were lacking for me in the first book were like not a lot of scheming and not a lot of action. It was mainly traveling around. So that wasn't missing in here we had everything that i needed everything that i was expecting from this world i thought that we got a lot of the plotting the scheming the action that we are used to in the folk of the air series and that made it so so enjoyable for me and a big plus in the prisoner's throne is that we get to meet jude and Carden. in the first book they were only mentioned we don't see them a lot but here we see them on page and they play a big role in the plot and that filled the hole in my heart that i had for them that that was so satisfying to me to see how they grew how their love grew for each other and all their usual sassiness and snarky comments i was thriving when they were on page i also loved the relationship development between oak and ren to see how they connected and how they truly see each other not as everyone else sees them but they truly see each other's souls i think the way they accepted each other they are so perfect for each other and their romance just melted my heart and i enjoyed the tension a lot the will they won't they was so so well done they deserve all the happy endings in the world both of them endured so so much when they were children and I wish them all the happiness and overall I enjoyed the second book so so much. Uh, both of them are good but the second book was better in my opinion. The next book that I picked up was A Fragile Enchantment. This is a YA Regency inspired romantic fantasy and in this book we follow Neve. She's a seamstress that has magical gifts that allow her to weave emotions and feelings into her work and she gets invited to design the prince's wardrobe for the royal wedding. This book I would say was a romance with a dash of magic and with some conflicts that are happening around the kingdom just to keep the plot interesting. And I love the grumpy character of Kit and how Neve was shocked in their first encounter. It was so hilarious. And then little by little she started to see his true self, his true character through other side characters, other things that he has done. And they started to build a friendship. I really enjoyed this one and I loved how it was not, it didn't add unnecessary details because it's just a standalone. So I was happy that the main focus of the story was Neve and Kit's relationship and everything else that was added, it was just to keep the story 
more interesting and to keep the plot moving forward. Overall, I thought it was beautifully written. I loved the prickly character of Kit and the slow burn romance. It was a delightful, charming story. The next book I picked up was The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. I mentioned a little bit about this book during my vlog, at the beginning of the vlog, where I read Bride and The Curse of Saints and A Tempest of Tea, but I wanted to mention a bit about it in here because I mentioned it very, very briefly. So this is an adult fantasy romance and the fantasy element, as I said in the vlog, is not the main thing in the story. If you take away the fantasy, you will still have a cute, sweet romance. That was so, so enjoyable. I really loved this book so much. I first picked it up just because I wanted to see if I want to buy the second special edition that Fairy Loot was doing and I definitely did. I pre-ordered that book and this one deserves more hype, honestly. It is a romance between two lonely people that found each other and it was just so heartwarming and just so sweet. We follow Mercy who is a mortician and she's trying to save her father's business, her father's legacy, and Hart who is a demigod marshal who fights drudges and drudges in this world are like these zombie-like creatures and he buried himself in work and he has no friends and he always clashed with Mercy. They always had this antagonistic relationship and she calls him heartache and he calls her merciless and I thought that he's an absolute adorable grump and she has the greatest biggest heart and she does her job with a lot of heart and passion. I loved how in the beginning of the book they despised, totally despised each other and how they started their relationship is that Hart decided to write a letter anonymously to a friend and the letter ends up in Mercy's hands and she reads it and decides to respond to it because she connected to it. And that's how they start an anonymous pen pal relationship. I loved how they found each other after they felt so lonely and misunderstood and I loved their dynamic so so much and the side characters in this book especially Basarius and Pen oh my god I was laughing out loud it was so hilarious I was laughing out loud I remember some of the lines the sarcasm in this book is so so good I loved it it was so enjoyable very very fun to read the romance touched my heart. Very lighthearted, fun read. I highly, highly recommend this book. Definitely, definitely worth your time and definitely going to continue on with the series. The next books I read were In the Universe of Finley Donovan. Since I decided to pick up book four as soon as possible, I needed to read Vero's novella in the middle before I read book four. So if you didn't know about the novella, after you have read all three books in the series, the first three books, you need to read the novella. I mean, it's not a need, but it is there after the three books to know a little bit about the background of Vero and her backstory, her history with her family, her sorority, what she did before she met Finley and her relationship with Javi. So I decided to pick it up. It was a short novella. It is around the 120 pages, I think. It is called Veronica Ruse Breaks the Bank. And it was a cute, fun read. As I said, you get a lot of backstory. You get her sassiness as usual. I love Veronica's character so, so much. And in this novella, we follow her as she tries to uncover the mystery of the missing funds at a bank where she desperately wants to start working. And we also get to see more about her motives and, as I said, her romance with Javi. It was just the perfect preparation to read the next book, which is Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice. And yes, yes, I love this so, so much. I enjoy these books so much. Finley and Vero's shenanigans, for me, they never get old and I will never get tired of reading about them. Even if sometimes you feel like it's a bit repetitive, the dynamic is so fun and hilarious and everything is so fast paced and the story is always, always so interesting. And when you are certain that you have figured it out, it just takes another turn. I loved it so, so much. It is just so fun. And this book picks up right after we left off in book three. 
and they decide to go on a girls weekend in Atlantic City. It was their pretense because they needed to do something that I cannot tell you about because you need to read the first books. But in this book, we get more of Finley's family. Her mother follows with them and we get to see more of her family dynamic and her mother was so hilarious. Being with these characters is always such a great time and El Cosimano's writing has true magic in it. You are sitting there reading and you want more. It was as usual fun, witty, clever with some heat and a lot of humor and I enjoyed every single moment of it. If you are looking for a series that does not take itself too seriously and that can be over the top in the best way possible, this is for you. I highly, highly recommend Finley Donovan. Next up, I picked up a YA thriller. It was Five Survived by Holly Jackson. And in this book, we follow a group of friends. We have six friends in an RV that are traveling for the spring break. And in the middle of nowhere, the RV breaks down. And as they are sitting there trying to find a solution, all four wheels of the RV got shot out by a sniper. And the story starts from there. This was fast-paced and suspenseful, as all Holly Jackson's books are. The entire plot takes place over the span of eight hours. But for me, I didn't connect to the story and the characters as much as I did with the reappearance of Rachel Price. And I also figured out the secret that they were trying to discover. But with that being said, I think if you enjoy a story with unlikable characters that happen in a short span of time and that happens in a locked room setting, I think you will enjoy this one. For a YA mystery, this was just okay for me. It's not her best work. Don't expect the level of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder or her newest release, The Reappearance of Rachel Price. I think if you don't expect that, you will not be disappointed. But I read it after I read The Reappearance of Rachel Price. I felt the difference, the huge difference between them. So my advice would be to read it before that because then you will go a step up from that book. So yeah, but nonetheless, it was very fast paced, very suspenseful and I finished it and I enjoyed it. And after that, I picked up the Bonds That Die series. All six books in the series, I read them in the span of a week, I think. So I will be holding just only one book. I cannot hold all six books. But let me tell you, <laughs> this is an adult paranormal Why Choose reverse harem series. And to be honest, when I picked it up, I was expecting mostly smut, but it's much more than that. And it surprised me in the best way possible. In this world, we follow Oleander and Oli has been running from her bonds her entire life after she has been in an accident with her family and she has been running and avoiding them and other things also happened during that time but she mainly was running from them because of something that she couldn't talk about and the bonds in this world are like fated mates each person can be a bond or can be a central central if you are the person the main a uh, person that has like multiple relationships with, with the people in the bond or you are a bond that is connected to a central. And these people are gifted, they have powers and each one of them is different. And I thought it was so cool to discover each person's powers and also get to know each one of them. All of them have distinct different personalities that I fell in love with each and every one of them. Oli has five bonds and every single person will steal your heart. Uh, they will do anything for her and I loved that so much and I loved how the plot expanded. I know that some people didn't like that but for me I really liked it. I, it was a nice surprise and I liked how the story got bigger when you progress in the series and also when you progress, I think the first book we have only Ollie's POV, maybe one time we get North, but as you progress in the series, the books become multiple POVs and each chapter is different and it makes you just turn the pages faster and it makes you just want to read the story faster. Um, there is something addictive in the writing. Oh, about the writing style, the first book, 
not the greatest, I'm not going to lie. This is not the purple prose enchanting lush writing, no. But if you can get past that, especially in the first book, if you can get past that, you will have the greatest time. These are very, very bingeable. I read the whole series in the span of one week, I think six books in a week, that's a record for me. And yeah, it was just so fast paced and very, very bingeable. And to be honest, I didn't expect the story to have this much emotions and trauma. And I deeply connected with Ollie. She didn't have the best childhood. She went through some rough times, very, very traumatizing rough times. So there are trigger warnings in the book um, and also other characters too. I don't want to say who, but I connected with them so, so much. These are filled with emotions that I didn't expect, to be honest. And I connected with these characters a lot and I wanted to see what's going to happen with them. And as I said, I thought that the series was basically going to be smut and there is no smut at all in the first book, which surprised me and kept me going, to be honest, because this was like a bully romance in the beginning, but then it develops into something very, very big and filled with emotions, as I said. it's They surprised me a lot, these books, and that's why I kept going. This was such a big, pleasant surprise that I devoured. If you want to start reading Reverse Harem, I think this is a good start because we have a lot of emotions and a lot of things that will make you connect with the characters and root for them. And I love them so, so much, to be honest. And it's so, so bingeable, as I said, so fast paced and very easy to read. And yeah, that was it for me, book besties. If you made it this far, leave me any dog emoji of your choice or puppy. And let me know your favorite reads of last month. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and share it with your friends and family. I would appreciate it so, so much. And also don't forget to subscribe and join the beautiful, amazing community of book besties here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.